Tis I. Hey everyone, glad to see you back. Glad to see you looking fresh. And today, I want to talk about Megalopolis. A film that I didn't expect to see, honestly, ever. I, for one, didn't believe this movie to exist. I didn't watch the trailer because it was uh, AI-generated quotes all over it, which didn't make any sense, so I just avoided all the trailers. It premiered at Cannes. I didn't go to Cannes, obviously. So, and honestly, any movie that premieres at a film festival, until it comes out to the general public, I still don't believe it really exists because there's been movies that have come out of film festivals that weren't released to the general public later. I didn't know it was going to secure funding for... I mean, it didn't secure funding for production... Francis Ford Coppola just pushed this whole thing out by himself, basically. I didn't know it was going to secure uh, distribution, but eventually did. Uh, or marketing, which I guess he also funded himself. So, passion project through and through when it comes to Megalopolis. This is a one-of-a-kind movie that is so near impossible to describe, but also so easy to understand at the same time. This movie exists in this weird in-between state of it's so close to being something. It is also so close to just being garbage that, honestly, I kind of wish more movies existed in this weird gray zone where I felt something and I wanted to talk about it, but I feel like I have nothing to say. So I'm going to try to get into it. So it stars... A slew of people. I won't get into every person that's in this because some people, like, I don't know, Jason Schwartzman, for instance, is just kind of floating around the background, doesn't really have much bearance on the plot or the story. He just kind of exists in the world of New Rome, which is New York City. Uh, they just changed the name to be part of the Roman Empire because it's an allegory for the fall of the Roman Empire could be the fall of the American Empire if we don't... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, I was talking about the characters. I just, yeah, I'm already getting all over the place. That's how this whole video is going to be. It's going to be very train of thought, just zigzagging away, right? I'm going to try to keep focused, but this movie doesn't keep focused, so so be it. I remember my favorite actor working today. I think I said that before. I'll continue to say that. You know, people were like pointing at his recent filmography and being like, that one's bad, that one's bad, that he needs to better. I mean, I'm pretty sure he picks interesting projects. And I continue to applaud him doing so. He's definitely made his money on Star Wars. And he doesn't need to pick big budget films anymore. He can pick weird experimental stuff. Like the new Francis Ford Coppola movie. Without needing to worry. Right? This whole argument I've been seeing him floating around. Of him having a really poor filmography lately. Is nonsensical. And I will not stand for it. But that being said. Uh, he is doing something in this movie. He's acting very straight, narrow, very strong, dramatic performance that Adam Driver is very much capable of. He's acting across people that are not giving the same energy that he's giving. Honestly, I believe every character and every actor was given different notes on how to play in this world. Uh, Natalie Emmanuel plays the daughter of the opposing side of the political spectrum uh, against Adam Driver. You know, he plays a character called Caesar. Uh, and Juan Carlo Esposito plays a character called... I just had it. Cicero. They're opposing fronts. So Cicero's the mayor. Adam Driver is like this up-and-coming architect, genius, who created this thing called... Megalon that he can use it's like a miracle product that can build utopias and it can be used as whatever it's like a magic snake oil that actually works right and he's given a Nobel Prize for it and he wants to use it to build a better tomorrow but the mayor wants to keep the same old, same old as it's been working, because it's been working, right? Classic, like, move forward, or keep the same. I mean, the politics are clear as day, right? This movie is not shining away from, like, what it's trying to say at any given moment. Every actor, character is portraying a very specific idea versus an actual character, right? I couldn't tell you what Caesar in this. 
Uh, I can tell you, like, what he wants to do, because that's what the politics want to do. You know, I couldn't tell you, like, his feelings on any given mundane circumstance unless it directly relates to what the plot needs it to happen, right? If that makes any sense. There's, like, a whole Romeo and Juliet, like, opposing sides love story, which sometimes has a huge conflict. Sometimes it doesn't really feel like it has an effect on anything. There are... I, I'll get to that in a way. There's a character called the Wild Platinum in this who everyone's like, that's such a weird name. Can you believe that? That's just a weird name for for Aubrey Plaza to be playing a character called Wow Platinum. That's such a weird name. It's clearly a stage name. I don't know if everyone's kind of forgetting that, like skipping over that part. She's a performer, not a performer, she's a reporter. But clearly she's like a reporter like a YouTube news anchor would be, right? They put on a, a persona. I doubt or she was born the name Wow Platinum. Like, people have weird names in this movie, but they have consistent weird names. No one's naming their kid Wow. I mean, come on. Anyway, I'm getting upset about the discourse. Uh, the discourse around this film is interesting because, like, there are people that love it, there are people that hate it, and there are valid points on either side. I think to... My annoyance with some of the discourse comes from the fact that some people... Um, not that they don't get it, because they're, it, I think everyone kind of gets it who's seen this movie, is that, that they're telling people like to not try it, which is aggravating beyond belief. And I'm, I'm not one to be like, you have to watch every movie of all time, that's, that's ridiculous. But to say a, a film that's clearly a passion project from a director who has uh, all but earned our respect at this point, and to just look at that and say, no, you can't like engage with it, don't engage with it, is, is stupid, um, it's, it's aggravating. And um, to use different, like, notions as to, like, oh, I don't like this, I don't like that, and, like, the Wild Platinum thing has come up as, like, that's a stupid name for a stupid character in a stupid movie, and I'm like, that's, that's, yeah, the characters, they are as obvious as obvious can be, but there, there is some weird, like, interestingness to them, because they don't, like, talk like people do. Sometimes they'll talk in... Shakespearean quote sometimes they'll talk in pure Latin sometimes they'll just talk like any other person would there's no consistency and I I don't know I think it kind of like works in this weird ebb and flow to it once you kind of get on the movie's wavelength and trust me that is not an easy feat to do it took me like an hour to get into this movie's wavelength it is there is a wall between you and interacting with the film there is a lot that the film asks you to do. A lot of film, there's a lot the film kind of expects you to just take in and believe. It's not an easy watch. It's not a quick watch. It's not a fun watch per se. But I do honestly believe that it is a worthy one. I mean, all of this to say, I don't even know if I like the thing or not. Right? I'll stand here and defend it as a piece of art, as a piece of. Uh, experimental filmmaking and a thing that should exist and from a director that like I said is clearly earned our respect and I'm not even like the biggest Godfather fan I, I love Apocalypse Now I think that's incredible I love Dracula Bram Stoker's Dracula that came out in the 90s um, I like Tucker like I, I do like Francis Ford Coppola's work Godfather never been my favorite thing in the world uh, it's you know society's one of society's favorite movies of all time so that's, I mean, that alone, I think, seeing what this man has been wanting to create for decades now and seeing that come to fruition, I think is worthy of celebration in and of itself. After leaving this movie, there's two groups of people behind me leaving. One group was legitimately pointing and laughing at the movie and saying that was absolutely ridiculous. How absurd of a movie it was. How could that have happened? Because there was a point in this movie that me included, the tone of the film... From time to time, it bounces. Sometimes it like will tell jokes. And most of the time, it's like this semi-serious drama. It's hard to take it super seriously because of the big flamboyant like nature of it. The gaudy look of the film. It's very gold, gilded, or it's very like grungy to try to like emphasize like the wealth disparation. Like there's, like I said, obvious what it's trying to say. 
it's so exaggerated that when the film tries to kind of play it straight, it's weird. So when it tries to tell a joke, sometimes it doesn't feel like a joke. It just seems to be like part of the normality of it. And there are, there's one point in particular that people, like I said, me included, in the theater couldn't take it anymore. And we just started laughing at the movie. And it didn't last for very long, for about five minutes or so. I, even if, I don't know if it's that long. There's this weird sex scene that happens in the movie. And it's not like there was no sex in the movie previous to this. There, there are droppings of it throughout. But this one scene, and we were all just like, what is this now? And we couldn't take it seriously. I don't think anyone could take it seriously. I don't know. Maybe it was intended to be funny. That's the thing with this movie is sometimes, like, what the story is trying to say is clear as day. What the production is trying to say sometimes is it. So you end up with this thing this product, this movie, this piece of art that is tonally clashing with itself at any moment it can. And so we get to a scene where, you know, people are pointing and laughing at it when, you know, an hour ago, Adam Driver would crack a joke and people were laughing with it. So it, when it comes to leaving the film, and I was kind of eavesdropping a little bit on people's like talking points with the people they're with, one group of people were like, that was ridiculous. Um, I really liked Aubrey Plaza because, you know, she was playing a comedic thing in it. So if you're pointing and laughing at a movie, the most comedic character you're probably going to latch on to. There's another group of people, though, that were legitimately like, I liked that for the most part. They were saying, like, they they knew the talking points going into it. They knew the discourse. And they left saying, like, hey, it was flawed. But overall, I thought it was great. Um, I was firmly down the middle, and I'm not trying to fence it or anything. I just have very strong opinions on both ends of it, to where I think that in a lesser director's hands, if I didn't know the story of this, if I walked in completely blind, right, I would say that this movie just needed more time in the oven. I would say that this movie just needed less studio interference. But none of that's true from what we understand. This is not a studio film. The only, like, production credit that shows up before the movie starts is American Zoetrope, which, of course, is Francis Ford Coppola's production company. We know that he self-funded it. We know that he directed it. We know that he wrote it. So that studio interference, um, the time thing, I don't know. I don't know if when they were cutting it together, if the editing team was like, we can't have this thing be four hours long. So they cut out, you know, almost two hours of the thing and this is thing is supposed to be a four hour monument of a film that would make sense that's the only explanation i can kind of give to where this movie it large swaths of it you'll just be in a scene and you can just be like when this is over this will never be brought up again and it's true there are plot threads that are kept plot points that are exposed like explained but there are a lot of plot threads just they show up and they drop off and then they're left right characters are introduced and said goodbye to and that's just kind of it now i'm not one to say that plot is the most important thing when it comes to a movie i've never been that in fact if you listed every single thing a movie needs to have should have plot is towards the bottom for me um production design cinematography are extremely high and this movie excels in that a lot of the time. You can see where $100 million went most of the time. You know, you could see grand cityscapes of a futuristic city. And there are strange, like, trippy sequences of intense visuals. Every now and again, it, it gives this weird, like, fakeness to it. To where it feels like it's like a play. You know? And again, could be intentional. And I, I keep kind of battling this in my head. It's like, well, intentional... If this is a director you didn't know, A. If it was a director you didn't like, B. If it was a director... You didn't know the, the reasoning, anything behind it. This is just a movie. 
would you even give it the benefit of the doubt that that was intentional? Probably not, right? But I go into it knowing that this guy made Apocalypse Now. He knows how to shoot a scene. He knows how to shoot a drug sequence. He knows how to make a movie look good. So did he want it to look exactly like that? I don't know. Did he want the story to weave like that? I don't know. I've always been pretty good about explaining my opinions on a, on a film, right? You know, I've done movie reviews here on this channel. This one's extremely different to any other movie review I've ever done. Most of them have succinct points and talking spots and being able to go from point A to point B and explain everything directly to you, tell you what I liked, what I didn't, give it a score, move on. Megalopolis is one of a kind in how I'm, I walk out of it going, I don't know if I liked it, I don't know if I hated it, I don't know if I'm going to forget about it in a week, I don't know if I'm going to love it in a year. I have no clue. I have no, like, fathomable thought as to where this movie is going to rest in my own head, in society's head, in the world of cinema as a whole. I have no idea. Because this is honestly, almost definitely, the last film from one of the world's most iconic directors. And it's a film worth experiencing. Do you have to see in theaters? Maybe. It's big and it's experimental and it's interesting to watch. And I tell you what, I wasn't bored. For two hours, I was not bored. I stuck my watch a couple of times, mostly because I was like, where's the plot going? I feel like the plot's gone nowhere. And like I said, I'm not even a plot kind of guy. And I, I checked in an hour ago, and I was like, okay, this is just kind of the wavelength I got to be on. That's where it kind of clicked with me. I'm like, okay, this is just, like, just feel into the flow of it. And, like, two hours, 20 minutes or something, it went by relatively quick. That being said, though, I don't want to watch it again right now. I don't, I, I don't know if when I talk about it in, like, a year's time. Like, hey, remember Megalopolis, this film that I heard about for so long before it came out? If I'm going to be like, yeah, let's try it again. And honestly, it's it's extremely divisive for a reason. In 10 years, will people look back on it and say it's a masterpiece? Or will people point and laugh and say that that was a, um, a passion project kind of gone wrong? I, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Um, I If I had to guess, I would say that it would be looked fondly upon. I think that given it a little bit of time... More people can see it, more people can experience it, more people can engage with it. I think the more time and talking points it has, the more people are going to turn around on it. Because if you told me to make this video the second I walked out of that theater, I would not have been able to express a quarter of the, the words that I have said. It would have been a nonsensical uh, rambling. I mean, this was already pretty nonsensical rambling. So just imagine how I felt leaving. Um, all in all, though, I'm happy to have seen it in a theater, you know. I honestly didn't expect to be able to, but luckily I was out of town doing something else, and there was a theater that just so happened to be showing it, like, right after my appointment there. So I was lucky. I was able to get a seat uh, on the floor, not, <laughs> not in the actual, like, you know, ride seats. So I was, like, looking up at Adam Driver, but worth doing and do i recommend it i don't know to give it a score i six out of ten i guess um give it a year though it may be an eight give it a year maybe a two i have no idea there are things about this movie that i hopefully will for not forget i can't talk i have mush mouth now mushy brain this movie has done something to me but i implore you to at least think about it and that's the interesting thing. I can't be like, well, just don't trust the critics. Because some of the critics are like, they make a lot of points. And some of them I don't agree with at all. Some of them I do. And that's the weird thing about this movie is it's 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 divisive. And I think a divisive movie is better than a boring movie any any day of the week. So uh, more movies, I say more movies like that I'd rather have than a, than a plethora of boring stuff. But... That about do it for me today. Uh, have you seen Megalopolis by the box office numbers? Probably not. But in the future, maybe you come back to this video after you discovered it. That'd be awesome. 
Um, if you're watching this in the future, how, how are you feeling about it? You know, there have been plenty of movies that have cult classic their way into success later on. So by all means, let me know down below. Thank you so very much for watching. And as always, like this if you like this, subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you at some point.